welcome to Pulverostmannen. Due to the positive feedback I have gotten on my previous videos, but mostly due to a specific person that gonna use this video for educational purpose, I will now make this video where I will show you how you may store acoustic energy using a speaker and a capacitor. So a little about this setup. You want to rectify a speaker which has AC output when it goes up and down. Because it's a speaker with a permanent magnet and you have a voice coil inside, it will generate power when physical force is made the membrane to go upwards and downwards. So you want to use this power and store it in your capacitor, which in this video here is a 2200 microfarad capacitor. We're gonna use a rectifier so it can store the AC that the speaker will produce. So there are two ways to make this. There is a simple schematic which can make the AC output from the speaker using a single diode to rectify the current and store it in your capacitor. It could be made with this small single diode and it would be placed like this in the circuit. The backside with this experiment is that it only rectifies the half sign which would look like something like this. All the pulses will be skipped between every pulse here because only half sign is rectified. So instead using a full sign rectifier which utilizes four diodes instead you will rectify the whole thing making your curve with the rectify voltage hit every time here. You will gain more output power due to this because you will have the both side working with you and your capacitor will be charged much faster. And you can use something like this 4 pin rectifier and it can be looking like this one that we're gonna use in this experiment here. So we have a little voltage meter hooked up to our system here. As you can see there is only a few millivolts in the capacitor and we are hooking up directly to it here. We have a bulb that we can power up later but to begin we're gonna show you this stored energy inside the capacitor. So with the oscilloscope here the line in the bottom represents the AC power which is stored in the capacitor and the middle one here will be the AC output from the speaker and we have a, a keyboard hooked up directly to FL Studio that we're gonna ride, run through the speaker here and we're gonna use this output from the subwoofer which kind of works like a resonator because it's a port with a, a specific length and we're gonna pick it up with the speaker here so even if you start little, we can put it down the sensitivity here to like uh, 0.2 or something, I think. And if we play some notes, you will see that the speaker already will pick up signals, even when lying on the floor. There is still too little energy to get a real good charge here. You'll see it like increased by just a scooch. So let's get it up to the real level. And we're gonna put the speaker directly to this port here and show how much power you can get from this kind of sound. As you can see, the capacitor has now a good charge. And what we got out here on our multimeter is 5.7 volts, somewhat close to that. 
and you can see we are holding a charge which is connected to nothing here so everything we did now now was to convert the sound to electric current directly into the capacitor and we have a charge so if we would connect our bulb like this the voltage would directly drop down to zero because we have not, nothing to contain the current so we can connect the bulb directly to the cable here I'll put on the camera to do that put the bulb directly on the circuit and if we keep the sound going the light will illuminate and you will see on the diagram that the second side here will have a harder time to keep the charge because the bulb will drain the current between the pulses but it will still hold the charge pretty close to the AC but in DC form and the light will be contained a much more stable than using just a on a regular sound or something. So we got a little light there. As you can see it has much harder time to contain the voltage. It was just enough to make the light go on. But we can increase the output power from the sound source and we will get a higher output. So let's go ahead and crank it up a little more. Like 35 or something. And if we play it now we will get a stronger charge to keep the light going. So as you can see, the output power will really much vary depending on how strong source of sound you get your speaker to receive. So the energy is like very important to take care of everything you get from the sound and convert it to the energy. And that could be a good thing to have in mind when you try to build your circuit and take care of so much energy as possible. So, I hope this video was helpful and I thank you for watching and have a nice day.